Okay, good afternoon. It's time to start with the lecture for this afternoon. And as announced last week, uh, on Wednesday, we're gonna have our second exam for this semester. Um, so Wednesday, October 27, we'll have our second exam. And the exam is gonna be online. So the, you'll be able to take the exam from home um, or from anywhere that you have access to a computer. So make sure that you find a place in which you can sit down and connect with a good uh, internet connection. Um, the exam will be open during the lecture uh, schedule time. So from 3.30 and you will have an hour and 30 minutes to complete the, the exam. You will have more than enough time to, to work on the exam. And I'll go over the instructions in terms of submitting after we go through the, the format and the, and the material that will be tested in the second exam. Okay, so as, as mentioned already, the exam is scheduled for Wednesday. Uh, it is on the syllabus. We've been able, I mean, we have been able to continue following the, the proposed timeline. So the exam is scheduled uh, for the date it was initially scheduled. So Wednesday, October 27th from 3.30 to 4.50. Um, the exam is gonna be online. You will find the, the exam, the link to the exam on the modules in Canvas. So you go to modules, you have the, the module for the day, October 27. And in there, you'll be able to connect to the exam. The exam will have two sections. Section one, you will have the multiple choice or true or false questions. Uh, so there will be a total of 10. And those you're gonna be answering in the computer, so you will be selecting the, the right answer on the screen. And then section two will be three topical problems. Those could be short answer, explanation, description, or mathematical. So for these problems, you're gonna be solving in a piece of paper, and then you'll be taking a picture of your solution and uploading the file. If you have a scanner, you can also scan the, the document and then upload the the question and answer to the to the system. So, um, so for each question, you will have a space. So, for example, problem one, you have a, a space to submit an attachment. Question, I mean, problem number two, you will have a space to submit an attachment. Problem number three, you will have a, a space to submit an attachment. If you prefer to put all the attachments together, meaning that you have all three problems in a single file, that'll be fine too. The only thing you have to do is to put them together and attach, that attachment will go to one of those questions. So I'll be able to find the, the answers if you do that. Okay, so whatever works better for, me, for you, if you want to upload each answer separately for each uh, question, or if you want to group all questions uh, or the answers together, Put it in a single file and then upload that file to one of those questions if that works for me too so that's in terms of the format of the exam section one multiple choice or true or false questions those are going to be based on on the the lectures uh the definitions the uh concept that we have discussed after the second ex after the first exam so I'll go through through the lectures in a minute. Um, but you, you remember the first exam, those are the type, type of questions that you should expect in section one. So my advice for you is to go through all the lectures, try to pick up what are the most important concepts, understand um, the differences. If there are a comparison between options, what are the differences between those options and so on. Um, and the questions, problems, those are gonna be similar to the ones that you observed in the, in the assignments and in the labs. So if you're familiar with the problems that we discussed in class, the problems that you saw in the assignments and also in the labs, you should be able to do very well. You should be able to do very well in this second part of the exam. Um, so always remember you have to study because you have a limited time. So it's not that you will be able to sit down and try to learn something. Uh, you have only 80 minutes to complete the exam. So you should be 
uh, very well familiar with uh, how these problems are solved so you can do well in the exam. So practice, uh, study, and if you have questions, just send me an email or connect during my office hours tomorrow. I have office hours from 8.30 to 10.30 a.m. Um, and you can find the link to the office hours in the syllabus, which is posted in the Canva site. Okay, so the lectures, any questions about the format? Yes. The exam is, is closed notes. Um, so you should not have anything with you at the time of the exam. Only your calculator and a, a pencil. Um, I know I'm not gonna be able to, to monitor you, but remember, I'll design the exam in a way that if you spend time looking at notes or anything like that, you will not have enough time. So uh, I know that you will have that flexibility, but remember you have limited time. So it's important that you are very well prepared so you can work on the exam within the time period that is available. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, in terms of the lectures, you have uh, lecture four uh, was the first lecture that we covered uh, after the first exam in which we discussed uh, what is fixed mat automation system, flexible manufacturing systems, single stage multi-machine systems, and just-in-time manufacturing. So for the questions of the first part of the exam, I can uh, refer to some of the material that we cover here in terms of the differences between fixed automation, flexible manufacturing, single state multi-machine system, and just-in-time manufacturing. Uh, so I know for this lecture, we didn't cover any mathematical problem, but remember, we, we have concepts that are relevant, so it's important for you to understand uh, the differences between these type of systems. Uh, same thing for supply chain management. So we discussed what is the supply chain management, uh, a supply chain strategy framework, the components of a supply chain management, and the ma major obstacles and common problems within the supply chain management theory. Uh, from there, we transition to space requirements and layout. So here we talk about different type of systems that are relevant for, in terms of the design of the facility. Uh, we talk about structural system performance, enclosure system, atmospheric systems, electrical and lighting systems, and life safety systems. So we, we, we talk about uh, how to design some, uh, some of this, for example, the HVAC system, the electrical systems. So there was, there were some questions and problems, mathematical problems associated with those. Um, if you need uh, any type of tables, I'll provide those for you in the exam. Um, so, so make sure that you understand, for example, for the electrical and lighting systems, uh, we, we use a lot of references table, tables for, as references. So uh, you know where to find each, each one of those numbers that are needed to, for you to compute those requirements. Um, for the atmospheric system and the HVAC, I will provide you with the values for the U factors, uh, depending on the location. So those factors will be given. The only thing you have to do is to use that information, make sure that you are using the right uh, elements for computing the area. And um, using the right area, computing the, using the U factors, and then making sure that you're also identifying the temperatures. So you, you can compute each one of these uh, pieces of the equation. Um, then we transition to personal requirements. In here, we talk about the, the requirements for the employee. Uh, for us, for example, restrooms, we talk about the design of a parking uh, space. We did a couple of, uh, of problems in class and also in the, we did a lab. So make sure that you understand how those are, are, are work. And we also discuss uh, the design of restrooms, office facility planning, 
And we briefly mentioned the uh, compliance in terms of barrier-free designs. And then finally, we, we cover the schedule design. Uh, so in terms of computing the number of machines that will be needed for a department uh, based on the forecast and also based on, on the production efficiency and, and so on. And we also, the last thing we did was talk about the machine assignment problem. So that was based on the number of machines that you assign to each uh, staff. And then by looking at the, the, and if you get a fractional number, how do you decide in terms of increasing or decreasing the number of machines that are assigned to each operator? Uh, so again, that's a decision that you have to make as the, the manager. Do you want the machines to wait for the operator or do you want those machines to be running all the time? Um, but at the same time, you will have additional operators that might be idle for quite some time. So that's the decision that you have to make. And those are the, the lectures. Um, any questions? Uh, this slide should be available for you already in the modules. So in terms of preparation, study the lecture slides, the lab and the, the homework, the assignments. I will provide formulas and tables. If those are needed, I'll provide those. Um, the, the exam is closed book and notes. And the, the link to access the exam will be available in Canvas. Uh, so you will go, uh, by the time of the exam, you should go to Canvas, to the modules, and you find the date for, for the day of the exam. And in that module, you will find the link to access the exam. Um, for the problems, clearly show your work and all formulas using your solution. This will help me award full or partial credit based on your answer. Uh, so make sure that you show me some work. So in case you didn't get the right answer, I can always award you some partial credit. Uh, so the multiple choice true or false questions will be answered using the computer. And for the three questions, problems, you will upload a file. So you can work your solution in a piece of paper and then you can take a picture, scan, upload the file. Uh, this is my estimate. If you use the entire uh, session, uh, schedule time for the class to work on the exam, then you'll be working from 3.30 to 4.50. So my advice for you is to stop at 4.50 and use the rest of the time, 10 minutes uh, to upload your files. Uh, because the exam will close at 5 p.m. Okay, so be aware of your time. Um, so 10 minutes should be enough. If you are ready, you have your app, you can take a picture and upload or send it via, via email and then use those files to upload the to Canvas. Um, if you finish earlier, then you will have more time to upload the files. But I, I want you to be aware that you need to have that at least 10 minutes to, to upload the, the three files or the single file that you have for your problems. Um, any questions till this point? Okay, so to complete this review session, what I decided to do is to look at some of the problems that were assigned uh, in our last assignment. So this is question 9.4. And again, I will post this today. Um, I think you, you have access to this. If not, then this will be posted after the class. Uh, so in, in this problem, you needed to compute what will be the heat loss of a facility having the following characteristics. If the inside design temperature is 72 degrees Fahrenheit and the outside design temperature is 12 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm stating the dimensions. Uh, the, the facility has no windows and has six, six glass doors measuring three by eight. So again, pretty standard. Uh, you have the equations here at the top right of the screen. 
So you have Q equals AU uh, by or multiplied by the difference in time temperature in temperature. So Q is the heat loss for a facility component. A is the area of the facility component. U is the coefficient of transmission, which are given. You can see the table uh, below the, the coefficients. TI is the temperature inside the facility. TO is the temperature outside the facility. And then in order to get the heat loss for the facility, you have to add the Q or the heat loss for the floor, heat loss through the roof, uh, heat loss through the glass windows, heat loss through the doors, heat loss through the walls, and heat loss due to infiltration. So the computations are, are here. Again, I think the challenge for this problem is to make sure that you identify the, the right uh, components that you are gonna be addressing for each one of these pieces. Uh, so for example, for the, for the floor that you get the, the right area for the floor. In this case, that's a 120,000 feet square. And then the rest is just a multiplication of that factor 0 0.81 times the difference in the temperature. Uh, for the roof is the same dimension, 120,000 uh, 120, feet square. The coefficient is different. Um, for the doors, we have six, uh, and the area of each door is uh, 24. So QD is six times 24 by the coefficient and multiply by the time difference, uh, the temperature difference, I'm sorry. Q windows, uh, I'm sorry, Q walls, um, there's no windows in this problem uh, stated uh, there. So the walls, we have two walls that are 8,000 8, feet square and two walls that are 6,000 feet square. And we are subtracting the area for the, for the doors, six times 24 feet square. Uh, multiplied by the factor and multiplied by the temperature difference. And then we have the QI which includes the area of the, of the roof and the area of the, of the walls. So we have 120,000 plus 28,000 multiplied by the factor 0.2 time, uh, times the temperature difference. And then once we get all the factors, then we, we add those factors and we get the 9.7 to the 10 to the six BTUs an hour. So the challenge again, you get the right area for each component. Second challenge is that you are using the right units uh, in terms of decimal places so you don't get the, the right addition at the end. Questions? Okay. Uh, this one is... Uh, associated with the material we covered in the last lecture. So we have a, a part requires three processing steps on two machines in the sequence ABI. The demand for this part is 10,000 units per week. And the company operates six days per week, eight hours per day. Given the following performance data, find the number of each machine needed to meet the demand. Okay, so we, I think we solved this problem already, right? Uh, so this is uh, what we discussed as part of the lab uh, from our previous lecture. Uh, so again, you go through here in first, in order to compute the, the number of machines, we have two type of machines here, A and B. So we need to find the number of machines type A and the number of machines type B. Gene A is used in operations one and three. So we have to look at the requirements for each one of those operations. But we remember that even though there are different operations, they are using the same type of machines. So the total number of machines uh, required type A is gonna be the summation of the machines needed for operation one and the machines that are needed for operation three. Um, so before we get into um, computing those uh, machine numbers, we need to understand that there's a, a column here that states that, that there are some defects happening in each one of these stations. 
So for us to compute the, the Q value, uh, the number of units that needs to be produced, we have to consider those effect rates because if we have some units that are gonna be discarded uh, because of the defect rates, we have for sure, we need to have a higher number of units to be produced so we can match the requirement. Um, so that's what we are trying to do here at the beginning. We are trying to identify the input. So if we need to have 10,000 units per week, but we have a 3% defect rate in machine uh, in operation one, a 5% machine uh, defect rate in operation two, and a 5% defect rate in operation three. We have that, then we need to know how many units we need to uh, produce in addition so we can discard some of the units and at the end still get 10,000 units that are good. Um, so that's what we are doing here in the first part. We are trying to compute the input required for A1, the input required for B, and the input required for A2. And once we have that information, then we can go and compute the number of machines required per, uh, per machine type. So we found IA1 equals 11,423 units. The Input for B is 11,080 units, and the input for A2 is 10,526 units. Knowing that, we can go to the equation for F, or the number of machines, and substitute the, the rest of the parameters. Uh, and we got 32 machines, or 31.57. We round up because we want to have enough machine, so we always round up um, to cover the, the requirement. So 32 machines for A, and for B, we have 12.79, so we round up again 13 machines. And the last problem is this one. Again, this is a, a lab, so I guess, uh, we, I wanted to, because I don't think we, we ever discussed this one. So I wanted to make sure that you guys have an understanding. Uh, so in this case, we want to design a parking lot to be 400 feet wide and 370 feet deep. And the question was how many standard size cars fit in this lot? And I'm giving you, uh, I am asking you to use the W2 module. So again, for this type of problem, I will be providing all the data that you need. Uh, so the tables, uh, the diagrams, and so on. The important thing is that you know where to find the information, right? So for a W2 in standard cars, we have this following dimensions. Uh, we need uh, standard cars, 8.5 feet, 8 .5 feet um, width, and for 90 degrees, and a W2 module, the width of the module will be 66 feet. So for this problem, since the, the dimensions of the area are different, we have 400 by 370, the number of parking spaces will be different if you choose to go in one direction or the other. Like for example, here I'm using as my width, the 370 feet. But if you use your width, uh, the 400 feet, then the dim dimensions will be different and you might be able to accommodate more cars. Um, but those decisions in practice are made based on the location of your um, highways or the streets. Uh, so you should be able to design either one. Um, in this case, that the direction of traffic is not given. Um, so, so the first question is to determine how many modules the lot um, can hold. So in this case, using 370 feet as width and 66 feet of, of W2 module in terms of width, we go 5.6, which if you round down, that means that you can put five and a half modules in this area. So that's what we did and each model each module will have two rows except the one that has 0.5 or the half width, which is what you're seeing here 
In red, you have five modules with two uh, lanes or with parking spaces. And that at the top, that six modules, it just have a module which has parking spaces only for one of the sides. And then based on that, we determine the number of cars per lane. Uh, so if you were to design without the, um, the flow of channels or the circular lanes, if you design without the circular lanes, you can fit a total of 47 cars per lane, which is 400 divided by 8.5. But remember, we have to have those circulation lanes so you the traffic can flow within the, the parking space. So 47 cars a lane, but we are gonna roll adjust those for two circulation lanes, one of the at the right and one on the left. So those are denoted by the green lanes in the in the picture. So we want to uh, accommodate those circulation lanes. And that will affect modules one, two, three, four, and five. So road adjusting for those two circulation lanes, the circulation lanes I mentioned will be 15 feet. So we have to have two, so it's 15 times two, which is 30. And we're gonna subtract that those 30 feet by the 400, which is the, the width of our uh, parking space. Um, so, and divide that by 8.5. So we get about 43 parking spaces per lane where the circulation lanes are, are needed, which is rows three. So road adjusting for those rows three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, will yield the same number of parking spaces. They all will hold only 43. And then the lanes that are at the top and then the bottom, those are not affected by the circulation lanes. So we can have the complete row occupied by parking spaces. So those will hold 47. So in total, we'll have nine lanes with 43 spaces, which is 43 times nine, so equal to 387 spaces, and two lanes with 47 spaces which is 47 times two, 94. And then the summation of the two give us 481 spaces. Questions? Okay, so that's the last example. Uh, any questions about the exam, the review? Everything will be available on Canvas. The exam is on Wednesday. I will send an email today tomorrow to remind everybody about the exam. Uh, but again, everything is stated here in the in the slide. So questions? No, no. No, you will log into Canvas, you will access the exam, and you work on the exam, and then you submit before the time expires. Okay? Any other questions? Nope. Okay. So uh, that's all I have for today. We'll talk more after the exam next week. If you want to meet with me, uh, I have time now or during my office hours tomorrow from 8.30 to 10.30 a.m. Okay. So if you don't have questions, then you're free to go. <laughs>